G'day folks. Well, it appears I was kind of right about the Ford's battery being a little bit sad. Uh, it didn't want to start to this, all this morning. <laughs> so I had to grab my uh, RACV batteries out, kept one in the trunk and use this one to jump start it. Um, yeah, good batteries. I mean, a few people asked while they, I think on one of Brad's videos about batteries having the RACV or for those who don't know, Royal Autom Automobile Club of Victoria. You get RACQ for Queensland and all those sorts of things. Um, NRMA, all that. That's all the approval stamps or whatever it is. Nationwide. I mean, they overcharge for the damn things. They fit them when you've got a bad alternator, all that sort of stuff. RACV are sort of commissioned to sell batteries under those sort of conditions. Especially if you run them dead flat. I mean, the chances of getting a... Uh, older battery back up again after running it completely dead are fairly slim anyway because it, regular wet cell lead acids don't like it. Uh, sometimes you can resurrect SLAs or you can desulfate these and they work again but for the most part they change them out and I just go through at the scrapyard and uh, pick through the RACV stuff that comes in and uh, usually end up with a few like this one. I got this a while ago and uh, it was low but it wasn't fried like you could tell it just come out of a vehicle with a bad alternator I know some people go by the windows on them that one's still showing green but that they can be deceptive too you can still get a lot of use out of some of them even with a black window um, it's a, basically a hydrometer so that one's identical to that one I think it's just a little bit newer but it's had a lot more use so I'm gonna put this one in uh, still got 13 volts in it uh, at all times, doesn't drop. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do the uh, terminal hardware conversion as well. It's pretty dark out there, so I don't expect to get much of a video of it, but I'll try and set up some lights and things and just go from there. I'm going to go through my box of uh, electrical magic goodies and see what I can find. Got plenty of big rings, like there was a whole five pound bag of them in here at one stage, and now they've just dissipated into the box. Slightly smaller one there. We're going to make new ends, that's all. That one bolts down through the top or bottom. And that one there clamps onto the copper conductors. I don't have any brand new terminal stock, unfortunately. And that's if you want to get really serious. <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Buggered tyre pressure gauge. Yeah, those things are cheap crap. Um, Key switch end. I think they're all water damage stuff from work. They've been flooded. And meekin on it. I don't know what a meekin is, but it sounds interesting. Um yep. Everyone needs a box of goodies like this. I've just been building up gradually over stuff I buy from the junkyard. Um, one company had a surplus of these from assembling coaches and they uh, liquidated them. There was a 20 litre bucket full. <laughs> so I'll go through and uh, pick out some of the better ones. I need some about the same size but with a smaller hole in them. I've pretty much used all of them. Similar to these. So yeah, various industrial surplus. We got them from the foundry I used to work out. We used to make boss kits for our SAAS steering wheels. SAS steering wheels and uh, I think all that went offshore to China and the boss basically said throw the throw the box full of bits in the bin or in the back of my car and of course I wasn't going to throw away many thousands of ring terminals and spade terminals and other fixing hardware no way so that went straight in the back of my car and I'm still working through it today likewise industrial surplus auctions you can buy pallet loads of goodies there might be a lot of junk on it but every now and then you'll come across boxes of bits like that or o-ring kits or circlip kits and things and you might only pay 50 bucks for the whole pallet you get a bit of scrapped cash in later and you also end up with a lot of goodies so yeah if you can get into industrial auctions and things like that it's really worthwhile because things do go dirt cheap some stuff gets overpriced and people are desperately bidding on it because they want it but for a lot of the time you can buy like a friend bought a pallet load of perfectly good MIG welders from I think it was Nilex Plastics or one of the plastics joints that par partially closed up and I think he paid a hundred bucks for the pallet and there are eight welders on it he originally thought he was only buying one welder and they said no no you've got to take the whole pallet load like oh okay I better get the truck <laughs> so yeah keep an eye on surplus sales 
and scrap yards, carry a battery tester around, like get one of the ones which has the resistance element in it, the, um, what do they call it, the toaster, it's got a big resistance um, element in it, you clamp it onto the terminals and push the uh, magic button. You'll often find some which just dip from 13 volts down to zero in instantly, meaning they're dead. You'll also find ones which might be at 10 volts, but they won't dip when you push the button, like these. This might have been low at about 9 volts, but as soon as I pushed the button, it dipped maybe, the needle moved maybe a millimetre, but it stayed there for the whole 5-10 second cycle, so it means you can resurrect it and you've got a very good chance of it working. Uh, I don't own one here, but there's one at the scrap yard which the uh, owner has, and we just go through on a regular basis and pick out good batteries to keep or sell or whatever. Got plenty of charges there too, just put a few on charge, one can go in the work use or something like that. <laughs> it's all good. Anywho, enough rambling. Yeah, nearly there. I'm sort of butchering whatever I can to fit. These eyelets are too small and I don't have any new ones in stock. Not big enough anyway. So I'll redo that next week. And for now, just make it fit. I decided to use two of these, not the big bolt through one. These are a lot safer because they're lower. So that's going to go there. And that's going to go there. Should be good. <coughs> Much better. And this is the one that went belly up. <laughs> Not so good. Dating doesn't say. It's all gone. Oh. Well. And these ones are still serviceable too. Yeah, low. <laughs> Not so bad. Yeah, low. Cells are very low. Yeah, definitely low. It's a bit higher than the other one. That one's loose. Very low. Yep, yeah, she's shagged. I'll probably top it up and desulfate it or try and get a bit more life out of it, but it's not worth it when you can get free batteries. Well, not free, but like $5 each. That one go in the bin. I'll get me uh, $4 back. Scrap. <laughs> Okay, so last little thing. In the case of these batteries, it's a little bit taller than the uh, Century battery that I took out of there. The um, clamp bar comes across, but the bracket's further down below because this thing sits inside an uh, air-cooled uh, tub, which also actually has an air duct coming off to the front of the car. It's quite an interesting design. Um, obviously, getting your battery too hot harms it, so Ford put a... Uh, an outer shell around it with an air duct coming straight from just very in the front of the hood. Not a bad idea, but unfortunately the battery sits up a little bit high, so I've got to cut this uh, hold down bolt in half and extend it. Not sure whether or not to uh, try and silver solder it or uh, just tack weld it a little bit at a time with the arc welder. I think arc welding would probably be the easiest. Don't know, either way, I've got plenty of. Uh, map gas or uh, a decent stick welder. No TIG yet unfortunately. Can't justify the rental cost on cylinders. Not with the price of uh, electricity going up when the carbon tax comes in. That'll be the end of this month. I'm not looking forward to that. Probably another $200, $250 a year for me. Uh, unfortunately that's also that would also easily cover the cost of uh, welding gas and uh, wire for a year. So there goes that idea. It's got to hit something and I figure it'll probably hit me hobby shop more than anything else. I'm not going to go hungry just so I can feed a stick and a, a um, MIG or TIG welder. <laughs> so yeah, carbon tax is coming soon and uh, yeah, we're going to try and conserve money and do what we can. It's not going to be good. Yeah, I just noticed on the one in the car it says made in Korea on the handle. I'm not exactly sure who makes them but I believe these are a generic branded item. The battery guy comes around and slaps whatever stickers he wants on them and sells them off to different companies. There's nothing under it, but I hear they're mostly generic stuff. 
if you've got a different company name or something like bow repairs or tire power or someone like that if you can get a sticker printed they'll just slap whatever sticker you want on a generic chinese korean or whatever battery and uh you just sell it at your own price um the better ones like um ac delco i don't believe they're rebranded but um some brand some brands are a generic brand that's been stickered for whoever wants to sell it some of them are actually uh, made specifically for a company. I've got a few AC Delcos and they've been very good. I'm not sure about these RACVs. I've never had one long enough. Uh, I think this one can I think I had this one in the Jag Series 1 and it's just ran low after sitting for a while. The cold was starting to get to it. So if anything, this one's a bit crook. Whereas the other one's still very good. And I think I put a... Um, I can't remember what the one I put in there was, but it's really good. It's, it, like the, it cranked like it was on 24 volts. This thing always cranked a bit sluggish in the Jag, but as soon as I put this other brand in, can't remember the name of it, but it was just another scrapyard find. It might have even been Bosch. Might be a good Bosch battery, and that th that starter motor spun over like it was on 24 volts. It was just off its tits, constant amps. Whereas that thing there would lose amps. Yeah. Now I remember it. This battery isn't 100 percent. But the one in the Ford now is. Yeah, this is a little AC Delco that I pinched out of the uh, Yanmar tractor when I bought the engine. Uh, this one here actually also says made in Korea. So maybe by the same company I'd say. Mouldings and things. Who knows? Just like everything today. You don't know whether it's made in China or not. More than likely it is. And more than likely it's rebranded with half a dozen other different brands. Like air conditioners and lower level plasma and LCD televisions. I've noticed a lot of uh, even the earlier plasmas, the standard definition plasma TVs, most of them still used a generic Chinese made Samsung panel but they put a different brand on it. Be it um, Sonic, Magnavox, which are basically the same company now, um, Tavion, Philips, I think, had Samsung panel PDP module in it. Heaps. Some of them are Korean-made Samsung. They're not bad, but some of them are uh, a Chinese clone of a Korean Samsung, and they're not particularly good. They don't have a very good reputation. Yeah, I'm not sure about LG Electronics, but this one here actually says it's made in Korea on the sticker anyway. I'm sure some of the internal components might be made in China, but... As far as I know, a lot of LG stuff's still made in Korea. Mind you, that's a fairly old flat panel. A lot of the time, the uh, really new ones get outsourced to China. And there are various other batteries. It's pretty easy to see which ones are made in China. These ones here, Ocel and Axiom. That one there's Genesis, also made in China. Probably the same factory. Panasonic. Fairly expensive brand, also made in China. Same with their microwaves and things. Exide, big name back in the day, also made in China. That one there. That one there was pulled out 2007 and actually still works quite well. Powersonic, doesn't say where it's made, but more than likely, China. <laughs> Go figure. Good thing is most of these batteries are still very good. They've been changed out of UPSs and uh, still have a lot of life left in them. They just did a routine battery change because a couple of them might have gone bad, but yeah, I've got enough. I'm going to get stuck into some of those UPS units. They're quite good. That one there actually says made in USA in it. It's a Supreme Deep Cycle. We just get a little bit of acid weepage around the top there, unfortunately. I'm going to have to clean that again. But that's actually, I've had that for a long time. That's still very good. 1200 CCA Deep Cycle. Yeah, I thought this was kind of cute when I found it. <laughs> Smallest 12 volt SLA I've ever seen compared with a, a 7 amp hour. It's only uh, 1.2 amp hours, I think. Uh, 1.3 amp hours. Yeah, 12 volt, 1.3 amp hour. Maximum initial current, 0.39 amps. So it's a tiny little backup battery or maybe for lighting or something like that, little rechargeable camping lamp, uh, that sort of thing. It's kind of neat. 
uselessly small for most of the things I do, but I'll find a use for it. I might even try and drive one of those uh, Hitachi coil-on pack ignition coils off it because you want to try and make a decent pest control device with one at work. So we'll uh, either use one of these or some of the a pair of 6 volt 4.5 amp hour batteries that we've got. We seem to have a lot of those floating around so I might go with the uh, twin 4.5 amp hour 6 volts. Either way it should work quite well. I just want to build a safe reliable driver that will detune the coil a little, little bit. I've got a feeling that will be a uh, triple five IC based one. So we'll detune it a bit so it's not so uh, dangerous. Those coils put out a ton of juice. Wouldn't want to get shocked by one. No way.